Hi everybody, today is show and tell. I'm on the road in Seattle, and I wanted to show you of the over 30 trumpets that I own, most of which are Yamahas, I want to show you seven very, very unique horns, and I want to tell you not only about the instruments themselves, but also how I got these trumpets on board for my flight from Los Angeles to Seattle yesterday. I probably broke a Guinness World Record for a number of legal trumpets ever brought on board an airplane. So let me explain that to you. I'll show you about the horns themselves. The ones I'm going to start with, or the one I'm going to start with rather, is the Yamaha Model 6315 Flugelhorn. I've played this for many, many years. It's a very, very accurate instrument, especially between G and high C. It doesn't have that squirrely quality that you sometimes get in certain flugelhorns. This goes into its own satin bag, as will all of these trumpets, and I'll explain that when we finish the tutorial. I then place it flat down into the guard elite bag, I've positioned one of the dividers so that it's far enough this way that the horn can comfortably fit down like that. Then I put one of these affectionately known as a uh, the taco inserts that gets velcroed against the side of that divider and we place it down here like this. We'll get to that a little bit later. I read somewhere not too long ago that apparently there are fewer than 200 working Stradivarius violins left on planet Earth. This horn is also a Stradivarius, and in fact, it's even more unique. This is one of only 20 trumpets that Bach ever built. It was built in 1961 in Mount Vernon, New York, and this is a Vindabona model with a 65 bell. Only 20 of them were ever made, and I happen to be in possession of one of them. It was given to me recently for permanent loan by a dear friend, and I carry it with me proudly. If you ever catch me, after a master class or a concert, bring a mouthpiece because this is truly a piece of trumpet history and it's a real privilege to be able to have this in my possession. This horn also gets placed in its own satin bag and then I've taken the third divider that comes with the guard case, lift it up like that, you place this bell down, then the entire instrument is pushed flat. So you have a flat trumpet and a flat flute horn. That divider is then placed on top of that, it's angled down from the bell end down to about 45 degrees, so you have room at this end of the case for another instrument. Next one I want to show you is a prototype, which was built for James Thompson, one of my trumpet mentors, by Bob Malone and the good folks at Yamaha. This has an original MC1 lead pipe on it, and one other cool little customization is a sliding brace down here between the bell and the first valve slide. That sliding brace allows me to slightly alter the feel of the instrument whenever I'd like to do that. This horn is particularly special because of the fact that Jim played it at every one of my undergraduate lessons when I was studying with him in Montreal. I'm now in possession of this horn and it's a huge part of my own trumpet history. Very proud to carry it around with me. This too goes into a satin bag and it's placed on top of the flugel horn with the bell facing the opposite direction from the flugel bell nice and flat, and then I take the topo, the taco insert, cover it up just like that. Next one I'm going to show you is my go-to B-flat trumpet. This is the Mark II Model 6335 Yamaha. I bought it in early college, and now it's affectionately just known as the Cancer Blows trumpet. And of course, that's in reference to my dear friend as an homage to Ryan Anthony, the great trumpet player and human being, and one of my, my dearest colleagues uh, as a permanent reminder of his legacy and all the great work that he did. This too goes into a satin bag and it's placed on top of, with bell facing the opposite direction from the B flat that I put down there earlier. <clears throat> the last trumpet I wanted to show you is, uh, well, not quite the last, but the one, last one going into this case is a rotary B flat trumpet made by Schagro in Austria. I had broken my elbow a few years ago and was having difficulty holding a horn. And I saw this at a trade show in Los Angeles and I held it. You can see it's a very, very unique design and shape. And what's especially interesting about it is that when you hold it, it's ergonomically perfect. It floats. It doesn't have the, the forward weight that a regular instrument does. As a result, it's also a fantastic teaching tool because I can have somebody hold this horn, then grab their regular instrument and have to make certain body adjustments to have it feel the same way. Those body adjustments are really important because it allows you to maximize not only the potential of the instrument, but your relationship physically to what you're playing. So it's a very, very effective teaching tool uh, to show people efficiencies that they can apply to their regular instruments. This one also goes into a bag like this. And especially because it's such a unique shape, 
I wanted to include it in this tutorial. It's placed down flat with the bell just slightly behind where the B-flat bell is here and just slightly ahead of the C trumpet bell. Now you have all five horns in here, you're ready to close the case. This takes a little bit of finessing, but any serious traveler knows exactly how to close these kinds of zippers. And there are ways to do this very, very comfortably and conveniently, so you're not only not damaging instruments, you're closing it very effectively. Boom. You have five trumpets in a case. Now, I was going to show you the other two that I managed to get on board with what appears to be a garden variety, very simple and small looking computer bag, which I carry over my shoulder. But it's not. It's made by Briggs & Riley. And if you travel, you know Briggs & Riley is the best quality in the business. With that in mind, I wanted to show you this particular horn. It's an instrument that was built for me by Yamaha. It's an E-flat D trumpet with some very unique characteristics to it. They built it for me so that I could record uh, the Haydn and the Hummel concertos a few years ago. And it basically combines a trumpet body with a custom-made cornet bell. As a result, it has a lot of the warm characteristics of a conical instruments, like those in the cornet family, but also the accuracy, the centering qualities of a trumpet. It's a very, very unique sound. It's a unique feel. I'm especially proud to own this uh, from Yamaha, and thank you very much for making it for me. I put this into one of my other taco inserts, and I very simply place it down in the computer bag like so. The last trumpet I'm going to show you is my Yamaha model 9920 piccolo trumpet. It's a three-valve piccolo with a rotor fourth valve right there, and yes, it's blue. I have been known to tell flight attendants this is made of crushed sapphire, and it's worth $3.2 million. And I do that without cracking a smile. True story. I take this horn and I put it into an ordinary cup mute bag and I place that just on top of the E flat trumpet, which is now protected by the taco insert. Close that up from right here, put it on this side, you're done. Now, this computer case has an especially awesome telescopic handle on it, and this is where the quality of this particular case is very, very important. I take that, put it on the floor, then I take my guard. Triple Elite, which has five large instruments in it. Place it on top, run the strap this way, boom. You're rolling to your next destination. Now, just in case you ever get stopped at the gate and they say there's no way that trumpet case is coming on board, even though the Guard Triple Elite has been measured with airport sizes in mind and it does fit into those, sometimes you're just gonna run into somebody that says no way. This is why the satin bags are so important. You literally reach in, take all five of your horns out like grocery shopping, and you'll carry them on board yourself, put them directly underneath the seat in front of you, they're completely safe there, and then the airlines are free to go ahead and check your case to the next destination. You get reacquainted with the case and your trumpets when you land at the other end, boom, you're traveling. Be creative, have fun with the trumpet, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. See you later.